Good, good morning. We are here with the family of Shali Tilson. Um, we're here to provide our response after we have read the special investigative grand jury's presentment, uh, the 84 page um, report. And so I have with me uh, a number of community members as well as my co counsel in this matter, uh, Jeff Olympidus. And so I, I would start with, um, with Jeff and then we'll go to uh, Ms. Josie Dean and then the NAACP uh, representative here in Rockdale County, uh, then myself and then uh, Ms. Um, Tanisha Tilson, the mother of uh, Shali Tilson. We have here as well um, the father of Shali Tilson, Mr. Vladimir Joseph, uh, who has been uh, here the, every step of the way. Um, despite his ailments, he's physically been uh, here addressing these, these, this tragedy of what happened to his son. So with that, um, I'll, I'll have Jeff come forward. Okay. And ma'am, could you be careful not to hit that stand because it makes a noise. You want me to hold this? Thank you very much. I can hold up with this. You need to. No, go So, uh, Mr. Tilson was a young man who was arrested for a misdemeanor. When he was arrested, even the district attorney recognizes that he should have been hospitalized. But he was not hospitalized. Instead, he was placed in a small cell, which contained only a grate in the ground for him to urinate and defecate. And he was held there for seven days. The district attorney appears to begin with the assumption that that treatment is okay. She never recommends that no one ever be placed in that cell again. She never acknowledges the inhumanity of being placed in a small locked room for a week without being allowed out. This jail placed this young man in a room, with no showers, no cleaning. The door was not opened. No one in the jail can provide an explanation for why. Nevertheless, the district attorney makes some recommendations, but none of those recommendations center around the fundamental problem, which is that a young man who was in need of dire mental health was locked in a room. It doesn't matter if he got treatment or not. You cannot keep someone locked in a room with the lights on 24 hours a day with no human contact aside from through a closed door if we treated a dog like this, there would be cruelty to animal charges. And instead, the district attorney recommends charges only against one individual at the jail, does not focus on the sheriff's knowledge of what was happening, does not focus on the policymaker's knowledge of what was happening. It's disappointing and it underscores the need for civil lawsuits because that report that we got raises much more, many more questions then we have answers to. Someone put a lot of work into it, but let's not confuse a lot of work with actual thorough work because there are questions that are not answered and apparently the government in Rockdale County is not interested in finding those answers. So that rule falls to the family in a civil lawsuit. That's what we're going to do. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna lower that guy. <laughs> got to see your face. There you go. Hi, I'm Josie Dean. I've been standing in the gap for a long time in this county. I told him when he got hired that he wasn't qualified for that job, so I'm not waiting till Tilson died to tell y'all that he was not qualified. But the day I'm coming to the citizen of Rockdale County, saying that we must make him resign, immediately and I'm even talking to the governor we cannot afford to have another death they don't respect him even after all of this they still was over there having sex with the inmates this ain't nothing I'm making up this is stuff that happened so Joseph Dean the citizen of Rockdale County we demand that he resign and resign immediately y'all be blessed
Good morning, everybody. I'm the president of the NLCP in Rockdale County. Okay, all right. Um, first of all, I want to thank DA Johnson uh, for our hard work in this whole entire investigation. Listen, we all know with this investigation that some people are going to like the outcome and some people was not going to like the outcome. But we also want to thank the special grand jury. It's the first time it ever happened in the county of Rockdale County, it was a special grand jury. Now, some people felt that because of the special grand jury in Rockdale County, it was Rockdale County members, because of the family's last name, the sheriff's last name, that that would be a problem. But looking at the 52 findings that the special grand jury and the DA find the sheriff's department with, we know that the sheriff needs to take these actions very seriously. With these findings that the DA and the special grand jury has cited the sheriff's department with, we know that DA Johnson have gave him a good roadmap to go forward with. Now, with that being said, as a community leader, now we're going to be holding that department to the high standard. We're going to be checking in on with them monthly and to see if any of these violations are being corrected. If these violations are not being corrected, we're going to be right back out here again with you guys questioning why are these violations are not being taken seriously. Thank you. I think we should, should read directly from the report and have a clear understanding about what this report says about this sheriff and about the sheriff's department. I think we should read directly from the report. There is a through complacency, reluctance, assumptions, and lack of procedures, training, and leadership. And leadership. This is what is at issue, a lack of leadership. When you go further on page 82 of this 84 report, the grand jury, the foreman writes, the grand jury heard over 60 witnesses during this investigation. The grand jury observed arrogance, defiance, incompetence, resentment, and low morale from some jail employees. That is a crisis of leadership. They have six pages of what they're now doing to make the correction, including what the grand jury recommended. What that says is that there was an absolute failure in leadership. This, this is an indictment. This is an indictment against Sheriff Levitt. When Sheriff Levitt was elected, the night that he was going to, they were counting votes. I was called upon to come from DeKalb County to Rockdale County and serve as an observer to ensure that his historic election as the first African-American to this high seat was not jeopardized by any voter suppression. And I did that. Now I stand here some six years, seven years later, and I am saying that this is an indictment on that very individual who had this historic run. It should be over. He should resign. So our next steps, we're clear. As my co-counsel has mentioned, we will continue to proceed with our civil litigation in federal court. And we will get some of the questions that have been unanswered answered. For here's the saddest part about it. He's on suicide watch and not no one can explain, not one sheriff, employee, or medical personnel can explain how he was placed on suicide watch. They never filed any of the proper documentation to put him on suicide watch. That's a failure to have someone locked away for seven days and not be able to justify why, not to be able to explain why. There is no indication in any medical record that he was ever suicidal, yet he's put on suicide watch. So the question is, why would someone be placed on suicide watch? Why? Because you want to get rid of him. Why? Because you're saying he's problematic. When you look at the report, and I disagree very, very deeply with the description of Charlie Tilson as a problematic detainee. 
That language should never be used as it relates to Shali Tilson. Shali Tilson was sick and he needed help. He needed medical treatment. What he did not need was continued incarceration. And so they describe him here as a problematic detainee. And that's just inaccurate. He was having a mental health crisis from the moment he entered the jail until the moment that he passed away. He was having a crisis that was never addressed. The fact is, these very videos that the grand jury was, were able to watch, they were available shortly after the death of Mr. Tilson. If you look at the videos, if you look at what was laid out in front of, of Sheriff Levitt, and then you look at his response, there were no mass firings. They just went on as business as usual. There were some suspensions. That's it. To suspend someone when someone's life is lost, when it, is, it was acknowledged, no one entered the jail. They left everything. They left trash. Here's a young man who dies in a heap of trash, feces, urine, food, plates. It's, that's the failure in leadership. That's why this is an indictment of Sheriff Levitt and why he should resign, step down, and allow Rockdale County to have other leadership that can come forward. So our steps are as follows. We will continue with our civil litigation. We will, we believe that this is torture. We have consulted and continue to consult with human rights attorneys from around the country. And we will seek to bring this before the United Nations as a human rights violation that this was torture. We will seek a meeting with the governor of Georgia if Sheriff Levitt does not resign. We will seek a meeting with the governor of Georgia so that his staff can read through this and they can make a determination as to whether or not this sheriff should remain in office. It pains me to, for us to have to go this far, but when you have something as blatant as what we've seen happen here to this young man who was 22 years old, there has to be action. And so we will continue that fight. We look forward um, to this fight. This, this fight and this struggle is far from over. Um, this family, this father, um, his sisters and brothers, um, just know that Shali would want them to continue to fight, and they will, and they'll do that, and they continue to stand strong as a family, and they continue to ask that the citizens of Rockdale County call for justice, that if it were your child, what would you do? What would you want? What would you expect? And with that, I will have um, Ms. Tilson speak on behalf of the family, accompanied by <coughs> Mr. Uh, Vladimir Joseph, Shali's uh, father. Thank you, everybody. Um, I haven't finished reading the full report, but parts of the report that I read really had me disturbed. One thing that really stood out to me in that report is, and I think both of my attorneys have said this already, that this behavior, not only in the United States, but in Rockdale County, is acceptable. They locked our son in a room for seven days without a toilet, without a sink, without food. I read a line, a paragraph from the report before I came out here. My son begged them not to let him die this way. He knew he was dying and they continued to sit there and let him stay in that room with no water, no food, and no medical attention. Outrage and upset is an understatement for what we're feeling right now. Our son was tortured in that jail. That sheriff needs to be removed and several deputies need to be prosecuted for our son's death. Multiple shifts watched him die in agony while he begged for his life. And I'm tired of keep standing in front of these cameras begging for justice for our son. And we can't forget about Jamie Henry, who also lost her life in a Rockdale County jail, begging for help 
the same way Shali did. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Um, in the report, it mentions that the mental health professional, Y.T. Bell, uh, could not remember her interaction with Mr. Tilson and didn't chart this. What happened to her? Is she still practicing? Do, do we know? We don't know where she is. What we do know is that um, there are others that will be held accountable. Um, we, we anticipate further litigation. Currently, we are focused on the sheriff, the deputies involved, but for a, a medical, an alleged a medical professional to say that they saw him the day he died, but they did not make a medical note of it and then could not remember anything about the visit um, stretches the imagination. And it, it does not compute that that's consistent with what the medical standards are or should be in this country and particularly in, in, in a jail where you don't have access to medical attention other than what is provided to you. And Jamie Hen Henry, she died 72 days later. She died 72 days later. Uh, she also asked for help. Her circumstances were, were different. She acknowledged that she was going through a, a withdrawal and that she needed help and attention and that was not provided. So we continue to investigate um, Jamie Henry's case as well. Was she also in solitary confinement? She was not. Okay. She was not. <coughs> Any other questions? Have you all been able to reach the sheriff since this uh, this grand jury report came out? Have you? No, we haven't reached out to the sheriff. The sheriff's lawyers have, um, in through pleadings, uh, I think moved much in the same spirit as the deputies were described with arrogance um, and with an absolute disregard for Shali's life. And so that has been, and if, and if anyone recalls, uh, when this first came out, uh, the sheriff told the citizens of Rockdale County to humble themselves. Well, he told us to humble and he told family. the family to humble themselves, to humble themselves. And he saw that video, to humble themselves. He saw this, this, this naked 22-year-old child begging for his life in a heap of trash, die, and they find him cold and stiff. That's how long it had been since he had passed away. Rigor mortis had begun to set in on, in Shali's body. They didn't even perform any life-saving measures because his body was so stiff and cold. And, and, the, and the community is asked to humble themselves. It's ridiculous. And the deputies named in the lawsuit? The they, deputies are named. And they have, have they uh, been placed back on duty? Or are they, what's oh, they, on they, there? they're all working. Other than, uh, other than Lang, he, he resigned over a, another matter. He resigned over selling, uh, the selling of confiscated firearms to pawn shops. He was under investigation for that at that time. When they uh, come up and put him in charge of human lives. So he's supposed to be responsible for checking on human beings after he is under investigation, under investigation for the selling of property. I mean, who does that? That again, it's a failure of leadership. Who makes the decision to place him in a, in a position where he would have to care for someone who could not care for themselves? It's a failure of leadership. And, 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 and again, this, it says it all the way through. At the very end, and I, I, I think we should, we should hear this. Hear what, hear what the, the grand jury, these are 23 citizens of Rockdale County. Hear what they say. There are good men and women who work in the Rockdale County Jail and they need support. Who do they need support from? Who do they need support from in order to properly and professionally perform their jobs? The grand jury expects that the powers, who are the powers? That the powers that provide that support will fulfill their obligations. This is, these are the citizens of, of, of Rockdale County speaking and saying that what the jailers needed 
they have not received. And as a result, Shali Tilson is dead. And we will venture to say that as a result, Jamie Henry is dead. And the only question is, who's next? That's the only question. Who's next under this leadership? This is their investigation after 60 witnesses, after viewing the video. This is what they've said about what they found as it relates to the jail, the jailers, and the entire operation. It doesn't meet any standard that, that anyone, they don't have any accreditation. There's no basis for them to even be able to hold anyone over there. Either they shut the jail down or the sheriff resigns, but they need immediate action. And so what does this mean for the county? Now that this report has come out, what does that mean? These are recommendations. So the problem with recommendations is that they can or cannot be followed. The, the whether or not this actually happens, we'll, get, we'll have to see. But what we do know is that this wasn't the first death. If we do some investigation, there were other deaths in this jail. We're in the process of, of contacting those individuals who have, families who have had loved ones die in this jail prior to. So leading into the sheriff's term, there have been other deaths. And so they didn't have any training on dehydration. They talk about the need to train on mental health. Mental health is an issue across the country. Catch up, Rockdale. Everyone has been doing training on mental health, but they talk about the lack of mental health training for the jailers. I mean, all of this is laid out. There was no, not proper training for someone to get placed in suicide watch and not one person be able to say how the process is broken. The system was absolutely broken. And so um, I won't apologize for my passion. This is the way we practice law, but this is just not acceptable. And, and even with a civil lawsuit, it's not gonna bring their baby back. It's not gonna bring her son back. So please, citizens, don't just turn you know, he lived in Rockdale County. Shali Tilson was a citizen of Rockdale County. He deserved better than this. He deserved better than this. Are you all seeking monetary compensation? We are filing a civil lawsuit. That's all that they have left. They won't lock anybody up. We hope that the district attorney will at least proceed with uh, prosecuting um, Deputy Lang for lying, for making up the fact that he was doing the checks. And one thing that is left out, one thing that we can tell you, that our medical expert says that if 30 minutes had they checked on him and actually had physical contact, they would have easily have been able to see he was dehydrated. Easily. And had they provided him water and gotten him to medical treatment, his life could have been saved. What's the normal protocol on suicide watch? Every 15 minutes, they're supposed to check on him. And so, the, the problem is that is that they're hiding behind what they're saying and the, what the report says is that this was just the process that you only look through a slot and you just say hey you okay that's not a check but that was what was acceptable for Rockdale County Jail and so they're saying well since that was what was acceptable we can't hold anyone responsible that makes no sense that if you know that someone's in there and that they're going through a psychotic episode and the only thing you do is yell through, are you okay, or you're checking. They're like checking to see if his, if his chest is going up and down. I mean, how was that a, a health and wellness check? That's just a check to see whether he's living or dying and then they didn't even perform that correctly because he had passed away and for hours he went unnoticed. How many hours? It's hard to tell, but we know that at least um, at least two hours he was he had stopped moving. We don't know whether that's when he stopped moving, whether he had actually passed or not, but he had completely stopped moving. His head slumped and he didn't move from that position again. And even a nurse came by during that period and she said in, in the report that she saw his stomach moving. And so the grand jurors go over, have someone of the same height as Shali, put him inside of the, have him sit in the cell, and they looked in and they said they couldn't see his chest moving. It's not possible. 
So this is just full of lies from the medical providers to the to the deputies who can't explain why they put him in the solitary confinement to begin with. And there there's an acknowledgement that because he threw water out, they said, well, we're not going to give you any water. Well, if you whoever decides not to give him water, aren't they responsible? This is reckless conduct at the very least. That's a prosec prosecutorial, that's a, an offense that can be prosecuted. And that's our position, that the conduct was reckless, that when you see someone in those conditions, you have a responsibility. And if you don't, you're acting recklessly. So you list the steps that you, you're going to take. You're calling on the DA to charge at least one of the deputies. Would you would you be content somewhat with that or no. We believe the we believe while no one because the language in the report is interesting in that they raise the issue around no one consciously withholding water. Um, and so that's part of the reason that they can't hold anyone accountable. But we do have instances where he didn't receive water. So we're saying that if you're on a watch responsible for someone and you are their sole source of water and you don't give them water, then everyone on that shift should be, that's reckless conduct and they all should be prosecuted. So that's our position. So no, one, one indictment for one person who's a liar about doing the checks is not enough. That the reckless conduct should stand. The grand jury saw differently, but but here we are. We again, as we said and continue to say, we will fight on. Um, we're thankful for uh, the community organizers that are present, and we just hope that the mass general body of citizens of Rockdale County will 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 pick up on this. It's in the it's published now. Pick up and read it. 